Hello and welcome to Frames Team and today we have a very interesting match between the Canon R6 Mark II and the Nikon Z6 III. Finally we have the Z6 III from Nikon. The Canon has been out for about what I think a little more than a year and whenever I've used the Canon R6 II I always liked how this camera works, how it autofocuses, the files, the color. I think overall, I really like the Canon R6 II. So let's start with the body design. I think the Nikon feels sturdier and the grip is slightly better uh, and it is a slightly heavier camera. Canon also feels nice. It just doesn't feel as sturdy as the metallic as the Nikon does. It feels a bit plastic on the side. One interesting quirk about the Canon thing is that, you know, whenever you take this car door on and the camera is switched off, the camera gets power back. You just open the battery door and uh, the camera cuts up power. Close it, the camera is back, it's live. So that's quite weird uh, in my view. Canon asks you to close down every door before you can start using the camera. So what happens is that if a Canon camera actually heats up, you can't keep the door open. The Canon R6 II actually has a smart hot shoe, digital hot shoe, where you can add accessories like audio devices that needs this kind of hot shoe. The Nikon, despite being launched in 2024, does not have that. But apart from that, apart from that, everything else seems to be better thought through on the Nikon. Let me start with where the photo to video button is. This dial, when you want to change from photo to video, is on the left side. On the Nikon, it is right at your fingertip. This is the back button, focus button here, the A1 button, right? And here is the lever for changing from photo to video and video to photo that's very convenient when you're shooting it's like you don't have to get busy with the other hand maybe you're just holding a heavy lens there both have a flip out screen canon have always had flip out screen from the times of the dslr days uh, nikon finally finally in 2024 for the mid level uh two two and a half thousand us dollars full frame camera for the first time, actually, they provided a flip out screen. In fact, right now, Nikon has two cameras in similar price brackets where you have flip out screen the ZF, the Z63, the ZFC, much cheaper, but then you have it there. Okay, now the mode dial is actually on the left uh, for Nikon, which makes sense because you're not going to change manual to aperture, aperture to shutter priority that frequently because you're going to choose your mode and start shooting. So maybe it's fine if this mode dial is on the left. The Canon has it here, which is good, but I would actually put this thing here and, and the photo video lever here that I would interchange. There is only one function button here and typically Nikon will have two here at the front. Now, if you think about the EVF, it is crazy how good the Nikon EVF is. It is fast, it's high resolution, it is very bright. The Canon is good, just not as good. Again, the back screen is slightly larger on the Nikon. That's a good thing, I guess. Uh, let's talk about ibis in this camera first i think they are very close to each other the ibis i'm trying to hold it still with just the mechanical ibis in normal mode gives a nice stable result at 135 millimeters right now playing the clips at 200 percent speed so that you can notice that the canon r62 moves around a little bit more than the z63 slowing them down to natural speed both look nice and smooth when panning with the mechanical ibis on both seem to have micro jitters let me slow them down so that you can see the steps in the movement it's the ibis mech resisting the movement this kind of ibis behavior is great for photos but not made for video in video while panning we need the camera to stabilize the vertical axis and allow free and smooth movement in the on the horizontal or sideways movement on the horizontal axis and you see exactly that happening with the nikon z63 with the electronic wear on it looks smooth and it looks much much better than the evr actually on the nikon zf that kind of looked a bit warpy Let's talk about the autofocus in video. Look, the Z63 autofocus is really fast, really fast. In fact, there are situations when I felt as if the Z63 is slightly more reliable than the Canon. However, at times in video, when it acquires focus on a subject, it kind of goes back and forth a little bit and then settles on the 
point it is the way nikon does it it feels like a contrast detect autofocus system just let me try it now right away okay it's not happening now let me record this video here it's not happening right now uh, because when i was shooting the other one what was happening is that i was shooting my ninja v monitor and that's completely black right so it's a very low contrast thing so maybe because it was very low contrast uh, nikon found it a bit more difficult to focus it hunted a little bit just to be sure where to focus on uh, but in that same situation the canon didn't do any of that and it, i think the autofocus of canon in video was very very smooth and i really liked that the canon r6 II just didn't pick up her eye from this distance as you can see this is at 70 millimeters with the rf 70 to 200 but the nikon z63 easily picked up her eyes at the same distance at 70 mil focal length which is amazing nikon did claim that it can pick up the eyes farthest and smallest in the screen the nikon z63 got 86 shots in focus out of 89 with the 70 to 200 f 2.8 the canon did a bit worse at with 92 shots in focus out of 103. The Canon especially missed shots when I zoomed the lens out. When I was zooming out and still shooting, I missed a few shots on the Canon. But the same thing when I did it with the 7200 Nikon on the Z6 III, that didn't happen with the Nikon. Dynamic range, if you talk about that, this has been an interesting one for me. After watching some dynamic range tests online and after referring to photons to photo dynamic range scores i was apprehensive about the dr of the nikon z63 it is certainly not as good as that of the nikon zf for example however i think it did very well when compared with the r62 let's start with video dynamic range i'm recording a very high dynamic range scene here and i used a 150 watts video fill light with a silver reflector through a diffuser but it's quite a bright day outside with h265 10 bit 4204k24 in n log it looks smooth i pushed shadows up by 20 percent and pulled the highlights down by about 40 percent the dark green top looks good on the z63 there's a bit of grain but quite acceptable the highlight area retains enough information too when i underexposed by a stop more the shadow area of the canon r62 looks noisier than the z63 and it looks as if it has a bit of color shift there as well overall in both shots in the shadow areas top on the green top the nikon actually did better it looks cleaner and the color is also closer to reality we know that r62 provides a total 12 stops of dynamic range in silog 3 but for the R62, but the Z63 claims 14 stops. I can shoot 10 and 12 bit video with Nikon's own picture profiles, but that is not possible with Canon. If you want to use the nice colors of Canon picture profiles, then you have to necessarily shoot in 8 bit. If you want to shoot in 10 bit, you will have to necessarily shoot Canon log. I actually saw someone sell his Canon R3 for very this for this very reason, and he bought a Z6 III the day I actually went to buy my Z6 III. The Nikon can also shoot 12-bit NRAW and 12-bit ProRes RAW internally. That's not what you get with the Canon. There is also access to ProRes 42 to 10-bit on the Nikon. The ProRes 42 to 10-bit looks really good and it doesn't do too bad in real world under exposure situations though i do think that the enro actually has more noise but better and gradual color shifts and tonality when underexposed by about a stop in the shadow areas so with some noise reduction raw will look better enro will look better and this footage has no noise reduction applied remember that in post my footage has no noise reduction applied in post in photos these two cameras are actually much better matched at the base i of 100 there is practically no difference in both shadows and highlights however when you look at the high iso raw files iso 6400 and above the canon r62 shows a a little bit more green than the z63 files now the z63 apparently does not have as rich dynamic range as nikon's other cameras and yet 
the high ISO performance of the Z6 III actually looks better than the Canon R6 II. Let's talk about rolling shutter. I used to think that the Canon R6 II does not have much rolling shutter in this category of camera bodies. And that is kind of true. There is some rolling shutter on the R6 II, but not much. But after seeing the performance of the Z6 III, it reminds me of the Sony A7S III performance, honestly. The Z6 III has almost no rolling shutter. In, in practical scenarios, where you're not testing it by violently moving the camera, where there is normal natural movement, which is organic, you're not going to see any tilted pillars and buildings or people who are like falling over with the Z6 III. And that makes the footage look really good and cinematic. This is a stellar performance by the Z6 III. And this is where the Z6 III shows why it placed so much value on speed over possibly outright quality. I'm talking about referring to a little bit of loss of dynamic range compared to other Nikon cameras. Canon can shoot quite fast. I also like the fact that, you know, how the shutter sounds is quite nice. It's kind of smooth the nice sound. The Nikon sounds a bit more clunky, to be honest. The Canon shutter sound feels smoother. Kind of feels more stylish. Uh, so I like this feel a bit more than the Nikon. Let's talk about silent shutter. There is also, because of a very fast reading sensor, no almost no distortion in silent shutter. So the Nikon Z6 III can shoot 20 FPS in 12-bit RAW without any motion distortion in images. Since the Canon R6 II does not have a sensor which is this fast, you will see some distortion when shooting fast action with the silent shutter. A quick note on burst speed here. The Canon can do a max of 12 frames per second in mechanical shutter instills in 14-bit RAW. It can also do 40 frames per second in electronic shutter, but that's going to be 12-bit RAW not 14-bit. The Nikon can do 14-bit FPS in mechanical shutter and 20 frames per second in electronic shutter both with full 14-bit RAW. Basically, if you want proper 14-bit RAW and higher than 12 frames per second, Nikon gives you that balance. It can go up to 20 frames per second but at the same time not lose out on the bit depth. You can still get 14-bit RAW files. Could Nikon have done 40 FPS or more in 12-bit RAW? Not in 14-bit, but what if they had sacrificed and gave us 12-bit RAW, but increased the FPS frames, frames per second? Could they have done it? Oh yes. Theoretically, because it can do 60 FPS 6K full frame video in NRAW, and that is 12-bit, I think it's quite possible. For But for whatever reason, Nikon has decided not to open that up. So overall in 2024, I think the Nikon is Z6 III is a comprehensive win actually over the Canon R6 II, although the Canon R6 II is no slouch. So if the Canon R6 II comes in with a discount or if you're already in the system, then the R6 II is the best camera for you. Do not change the system because these cameras keep upgrading their situation soon and tomorrow, maybe, you know, next year end, you'll probably have an R6 Mark III that beats the Z6 III or at least, you know, matches it. So in conclusion, Still, there are quite a few advantages to the Nikon, starting with the card slots. The Nikon comes with one CF Express card slot and one ultra high speed two card. But Canon gives you two UHS two cards for both slots. You're not getting CF Express cards, Type B, they're fantastic cards. Also, the Nikon has a full sized HDMI and at this very similar price point, the Canon has the tiniest HDMI possible. That's not good. The Nikon can do 6K60 in NRAW 12-bit internally. It can do 240 frames a second in 1080 and in 10-bit with just 5% crop. It can do 4K120. Well, this one has a 1.5 times crop. Don't forget that the Nikon 1.8 lenses are practically very close to quality of many camera manufacturers F1.2 lenses of any brand. I mean, if you stop them down to 2.8, you're going to have fabulous, almost perfect image quality out of those 1.8 lenses. Nikon will give you access to the cheaper third-party lenses as well. And now there are so many of them. 
The Nikon EVF sets a new standard for any camera in the whole market. This one, this EVF is stunning. So I would give the Z6 III about 9.5 out of 10 and I'll give the Canon about 8 out of 10 because this is, remember this is a very good camera. But overall the R6 II is a is a remarkable camera 3 2 it gets confusing it's a remarkable camera uh, it's already one and a half years old and i think at this point you'll get a bit of discount on the r62 so if you're in the canon system or if you're a budget buyer i think the canon r62 is a fantastic camera for you if not go for the z63 right now this is the best mid-level professional camera for the money this is almost like a mini z8 it is so hard to beat the Z63, honestly, in terms of real value. Value. So, it's understandable that despite being such a good camera, the Canon R62 here struggles to beat the Z63. For me, the Z63 is what Canon did with the R5, but more well-rounded, problem-free, and just at one go, not by giving us like firmware updates over the next three years. There you have it. If you like this video, subscribe. I'm going to see you soon with another one. If you like this video, subscribe. I'm going to see you soon with another one.